Hello and welcome back to The Beach Shack. What we're looking at today is an introduction to strategy. So we're going to start off by looking at what strategy is and we're going to start looking at how strategy can then be implemented in the different stages that we have. So to start with, what is strategy? What is this thing all about? Well, what we're looking at with regard to strategy is trying to work out what the company should be doing, where it should be doing it, how it should be doing it. So what we're looking to do here is we're going to try and find a way to generate some sort of competitive advantage. So everything about strategic planning is all about trying to achieve a competitive advantage over the competition. We say that we want a sustainable competitive advantage because that now means that we have a longer term advantage over the competition. That now means that we will have the ability to achieve our objectives, our mission statements, if we have a good strategy. Well, that's all well and good, but how do we get to the stage of actually having a strategy and then getting it into place? Well, what we have is what's known as a three-stage model of strategic planning, which is known as the JSW Rational Model. It's called the JSW Model after the three different management theorists that came up with the model, Johnson, Scholes, and Whittington. And these three guys came together and formed what we call the Rational Model. This is the first step when we start thinking about strategic planning. And it's the most wonderfully simple idea to have three different steps in our strategic planning. So what we're looking at is a bigger picture of everything which is going on within the organization and the external environment. So you're not just looking at the organization itself, we're also looking at the external environment. So please make sure you bear that in mind. Now what we have is three steps. The first step is an analysis. Now this type of analysis is known as strategic analysis. And why do we bother with this? Well, we need to do this because we need to understand the external factors that are going to affect us. So we need to understand the external factors which are going to affect us. We need to then use those external factors to identify opportunities and threats to us. And once we've identified these opportunities, we can then potentially use our strengths to exploit those opportunities. We can then look at those threats and look at any potential weaknesses that we have and see whether that threat is now compounded by our own internal weaknesses. So we have an external analysis, which then leads on to an internal analysis. The internal analysis looking at strengths and weaknesses will look at things such as resources which are available. We can look at things such as our core competencies that we have available. So what are we good at? And also any potential gaps in our competencies. So those would be weaknesses. So weakness would be our ability not to be able to do something. So our lack of ability to be able to do something. Maybe it's critical to the market. That weakness will now potentially allow a threat to crystallize and then potentially damage our competitive advantage. Once we've worked out what the external environment is up to and what our internal environment is all about, then we can start looking at stakeholders. And I try to identify who our key stakeholders are and try to work out which stakeholders are more important to us. And then once we've worked out which ones are more important to us, we can work out which ones we need to keep happy. Then we have a look at a gap analysis and the gap analysis looks at the difference between where we will be if we take no action and where we want to be. Now, there are lots of different models which allow us to go through all of these various different steps within our strategic analysis. So the external analysis could be a PESTEL analysis. It could be a SWOT analysis. The internal analysis could be an internal audit. It could be some sort of re re resource requirements audit. The stakeholder analysis could be a Mendelo matrix to work out which stakeholders have got more power and more interest. And then the gap analysis, well, we can actually look at that through an as ANSOF matrix to try and work out any type of efficiency gains we can make and any type of diversification gains and then also expansion gains. So there's lots of models here which will allow us to take each of these different steps. Once we've worked out our analysis of everything, then we can start thinking about choice. And what we can do is we can have a look at the various different strategies that are potentially available to us to close the gap once we've performed our gap analysis. Then what happens is we have our longer term strategy, which is the strategy required to close the gap. That then starts to cascade down into every single different business unit. And what we can do now is we can start thinking about the resources available within every different business unit and what resources will we need within every different business unit. That will then allow me to come up with a direction for growth. 
And again, you can talk about the Ansoff matrix in here. Are we looking at market development or product development? They would be our competitive strategies and how we then implement them. Whether we need to expand, so whether we need to make ourselves bigger through organic growth, which comes from within, or whether we want to expand by acquiring an external additional company, or potentially through some sort of joint arrangement, like a joint venture, or even a strategic alliance. A strategic alliance could be quite useful here. So once we've gone through the choice and we've decided which one we're going to now use, we then have to implement it. And we now need to come up with a detailed plan of how to implement it. That detailed plan will now have to include some sort of financial planning, which is where the budgets kick in. Then we can have various different targets set to show that we are achieving our objectives. Those achievements of the objectives will be my critical success factors and my KPIs, which we're going to talk about in just a second, my key performance indicators. And the achievement or otherwise of these KPIs will then allow for monitoring and control. Now, you can have feed forward control, which says that I've done an analysis of my external environment and I now don't think that my current impl implemented plan will work. So I now need to change it. So feed forward control means changing things before there's a problem. Feedback control is, oh, that didn't go the way I thought it was going to go. Let's now change what's going to happen again in the future. So feedback control is after the fact. Feed forward control is before the fact. Both are very, very powerful. Every time you exert control, i.e. take corrective action, that should have a value. That's really, really useful to me. Now, determining whether or not we've actually achieved our objectives, we look at this through a critical success factor, a CSF. Now, the critical success factor will cascade down from our mission statement and our strategic objectives. And these critical success factors are things that have to happen if we want to hit our strategic objectives. They are things that have to happen if we want to be seen to be achieving our mission. Now, these critical success factors can come from five main areas. So you've got areas such as the structure of the industry. And the example we always use here is a car manufacturer and a tuition provider would have completely different types of critical success factors because they operate completely differently. A competitive strategy, such as Porter's generic strategy of cost leadership, product differentiation, that will now lead to different types of critical success factors. Environmental factors, so the external issues, um, environmental factors can include things such as reputational damage or potentially an increased value with regard to your reputation. Temporary factors such as financial collapse of banks or maybe a global pandemic, that could have an impact. And then the functional management position has an impact because different types of managers are concerned with different issues. So sales managers are concerned with sales. Compliance managers are, com are concerned with regulatory compliance. So there's different types of managers who have got different types of issues that they'll need to deal with. Now, these critical six factors are all well and good, but how do I know whether or not I'm achieving these things? We determine whether or not we're achieving these things by looking at key performance indicators. So a KPI shows whether or not I'm achieving a CSF. OK, that makes sense. The KPIs have got to be smart because these are targets. So they need to be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time bound. So my KPIs have got to be smart. The KPIs show whether or not I'm achieving my CSFs. And that's really, really important. So the KPIs allow me to measure performance to see whether or not I'm hitting my CSFs. Now, this is a really, really important aspect. What gets measured gets done is a key comment which came from another one of our management theorists, a guy called Drucker. And he said, if you want something done, you have to measure it because if you don't measure it, people won't do it. So if I want to do something, I have to measure it. Now, this can become quite tricky because you may find that your CSFs on your KPIs are not able to be measured very easily. It might be things such as customer satisfaction. If it's a non-financial performance indicator, then that type of customer satisfaction is really hard to measure. That will be the subject of a different one of our Beach Shack sessions. I hope that's all made a little bit of sense to you guys and given you a little bit of an understanding with regard to strategy and JSW's three-step rational model. I must admit, I call the rational model the Saki model because it's strategic analysis, choice, then implementation. Much simpler to remember than the JSW three-step model, but that is the beginning of our strategic planning process. 
Thank you very much for your time and attention, boys and girls, and I'll see you all back on the beach very soon.